All right, everybody, it's Travis again, and we're going to go from classical conditioning to operant conditioning. Now, the four quadrants of operant conditioning are pretty much the foundation of all learning behavior, no matter whether it's an animal or a human, and that's very important to understand. Now, what a lot of people get caught up in is they will only focus on one portion of the four quadrants, or two portions, or three portions, and leave out one. And this is a very incomplete approach to learning behavior. Or, even worse, they use all four quadrants, but they use different um, explanations and reasoning behind it, which is also incorrect. So, I'm going to break it down to what I use it for in my program. Now, everything in the four quadrants either has a positive or a negative. Now, a lot of people confuse with this. They think positive means a positive feeling. They think negative means a bad feeling. Remember, this is science, and in science, positive means the addition of something, and negative means the removal of something, or subtraction, addition, subtraction, okay? We also have different versions of reinforcement and punishment. Now, reinforcement means to create a behavior. You're reinforcing that behavior. Punishment means you are punishing that behavior or decreasing the likelihood of that behavior to happen or stopping a behavior. So if you translate this, positive reinforcement means the addition of something to create a behavior. Positive punishment means you are adding something to stop a behavior. Negative reinforcement means we are removing something to create a behavior. And of course, negative punishment means we are removing something to stop a behavior. So this is why they call it the four quadrants of operant conditioning. I'm going to go over each one of these a little bit and have you learn and uh, understand what each one of these are and a few examples to just to bridge the gap of understanding how it relates. So first we're going to talk about positive reinforcement. Remember, this is adding something to create behavior. Okay, so positive reinforcement adds something to create behavior. Now, we like to use a verbal marker for this as well which is going to be yes. So the dog is classically conditioned to understand that every time we say yes, it's going to receive a reward, which is going to be used as a positive reinforcement. So we say sit, the dog sits. We mark, we reward with the word yes. The dog now has been positive reinforced. We added the treat, we added the food, we added the toy, whatever. We added it to create the sit behavior. It's reinforcing the idea, hey, if I sit, I get that reward. So we're creating behavior. And we do that with a verbal marker of yes. So this is um, reward base. So reward base, you often think, like you often at times think of clicker training, which is what verbal training is to, to an extent. So this is positive reinforcement. Add something to create behavior. We use a verbal marker of yes, and it is a reward-based system. Next is negative reinforcement. Okay. This is removing something to create behavior. This is where you see a lot of the old time, uh, a lot of people will train, they'll say, this is how you train to sit. They have a dog, they have a collar, they have a leash. They pull up and back on the leash and collar and push down on the butt, which 
makes the dog go into a sit position. Once they get into the sit position, they remove their hands and the leash pressure. The dog goes, whenever I feel this pressure, if I sit, that pressure goes away. So they are removing the physical pressure to create the behavior, to create the sit. If you want the dog to down, you will pull the dog down, and when it downs, you release that pressure. So this is what we call on-off pressure. The pressure comes on, the dog does the command, the pressure comes off, and it completes the command. So negative reinforcement, removing something to create behavior, and this is going to be on and off pressure. We remove the pressure to create that behavior. So now we have negative punishment. Negative punishment is the withholding of reward. It means we are removing something to stop a behavior. So in the beginning stages, I will use positive punishment, or I'm sorry, negative punishment. I have the treat. I have the food. I have whatever I'm using to train the dog. I say sit. The dog does not sit. I say, nuh -uh, which is the verbal marker here, that's been classically conditioned to. I say, nuh -uh, and I remove the reward, and I take a break. I walk around, and I come back, and the dog goes, man, I really wanted that reward. Next time, maybe if I sit, I'll get that reward. There's also a study that's shown with working dogs, such as Malinois, what they did is they took a bunch of Belgian Malinois and checked their cortisol or their stress hormones. Then they did three types of punishment. They did removal of the reward, they did prong collar, and then they did an electric collar. And they used these all on all dogs, all three of them, and measured the stress levels. And what they found was the withholding of the reward had more of a stressful impact on the Belgian Malinois than the prong collar or the e-collar. Surprisingly enough, the e-collar had the lowest stress levels in the dog. So what that means is, depending on the dog, withholding reward will have a more profound stressful um, effect on a working dog. So if it's something that really motivates the dog, you can actually control it. So, with knowing this, depending on what type of dog you have, you can start gauging whether or not you know, negative punishment withholding reward is too much for your dog or not enough. So, negative punishment, removing to stop behavior, we're withholding the reward to stop that disobedience, and we cue that with the uh, classically conditioned word of nuh -uh, Okay. Which leads us to the last thing we use in our training, which is positive punishment, which is adding um, a correction. To stop the behavior. Okay? So positive punishment means we're adding a punishment or a correction to stop a behavior. We tell the dog to sit, and instead it tries to run off after the squirrel. We give it a correction, bring it back to stop the bolting or stop the distraction. We will classically condition this dog to the verbal marker of no. So now it means every time it hears no, it knows it messed up and it's not supposed to do that. With the same thing as the positive reinforcement, which is yes, if you classically condition the word no properly in the early stages, then you can still change and alternate the reward, or in this case, the correction. 
So once the dog has been classically conditioned to know that no means correction, it will still have the same physical reaction to re of receiving the correction by just saying the no. So that means in the beginning stages, once we've conditioned the dog, we don't have to give the dog correction every time. We can simply say the word no, it will have the same effect as receiving that physical correction. Now, with keep that in mind, we still have to give corrections intermediately and randomly to keep that learned behavior of uh, condition. So, those are the four quadrants of operant conditioning. Um, I'm going to go in and talk a little bit more about each one of these as the videos go along, and I'll explain, you know, on the technique, what is positive, what's negative, what's reinforcement, what's punishment. But it's very important that you understand what each of the four quadrants represent and what they mean, so that way when we talk about the future, it makes sense to you. So go ahead and finish writing that down. Take whatever notes you need to write down, and then we're going to talk about the pre-MAC principle next.